Hello! Welcome back to the Hunter Call of the Wild. Or is it The Sims? For those of you who are unaware, The Sims is my favorite game of all time, and I like to build and create Sims for storytelling and just use it as a creative outlet. And I usually just play The Sims while I'm streaming, and I do my mainstay videos uh, center that around the hunter called the wild and also throw in the angler from time to time um, back in March in 2023 weird to say that <laughs> weird to say that was almost a year ago um, but that's when I hit a thousand subscribers here on the channel and as a celebration as my 1k celebration I decided to marry my two favorite games and try to build Spring Creek Manor which is my favorite lodge in the Call of the Wild. Uh, build it as a livable, playable manor in The Sims. And I'm no stranger to larger mansion builds. That's actually what I enjoy building the most. But I kind of struggled figuring out the balance of how much of the original manor layout, decor, color scheme... I wanted to keep and where I could take creative liberties for the functionality, my own creative flair and it being a different game completely, which means I probably wasn't going to get it perfect. Now the main challenge is that The Sims does not have taxidermied animals, like at all. The closest I had other than little animal figurines and a one skull mount uh, was the collectible fish that your sims can catch and put on them put on the wall and so I kind of use that as a feature and as a nod to the angler which is the hunter called the wild sister game and so to kind of get around having no animal mounts, I decided to decorate the manor as an eccentric home museum, as if the owners were well-traveled and they're showing their, collect their collectibles. And it was kind of easy to do because of the different packs that are in the game. There's one called Jungle Adventure, which is South American inspired, which could kind of coincide with Parque Fernando. And I tried to incorporate like other random styles that may be little nods to other maps in The Hunter Call of the Wild, like, you know, some like African influence or um, even influence that nods to Hirschfelden or because I kind of wanted this to be an English countryside manor, have some English influences as well. Um, I tried to put hints and nods to animals as well throughout the build using decor pieces like uh, using animal prints in the rugs and the furniture, even though the animal prints were of exotics like like tigers, zebras, and leopards, which we don't have in the Call of the Wild, but I think it got the point across that this was, you know, a lodge. I also used animal figurines and other trinkets. Um, I know there's like a little bloodhound that I have and like rabbits and roosters and things like that, but I also use them to hint at lore and lore on the channel and other games that we play like Bigfoot and Ark. And I tried to keep the layout of the manor as similar as possible to what it is in Call of the Wild. And the entrance, living room, library, study, upstairs seating, and the dining room are pretty much the same. Um, I think I changed the colors in some of them, but I tried to keep the other colors, like especially on the ground floor, the same. And I had to get creative with the open spaces 
and what I wanted to do with those because their purpose in the Call of the Wild is to showcase animals and that's about it. Uh, so I had to think how I wanted to utilize this room. So I added a ballroom, a recreation room with like games and other skill items for the Sims. And I even added a bear cult room. I mean, a bear den. Uh, which I am the bear queen, so we couldn't not have a bear room. It would have been wrong if I didn't. And you'll see, you'll know which room that is. Uh, the creative liberty came into play when figuring out the layout for the essential rooms and where I wanted to place those, the bedrooms, bathrooms, and the kitchen. And it was, I mean, it wasn't difficult, but there was already a bedroom in the original Call of the Wild Manor. So I definitely wanted to keep that placement the same and kind of build around the dining room and the seating room that were up there. But I think I did an okay job with that.
Now the landscaping was really fun because all we see whenever we choose Spring Creek Manor is the picture that has the red stag in a circular driveway and the red door with the brick building. And then when you're inside the manor, you look out the back window and you see there's a lake and just open field. So it was fun to not really, to, to just kind of get to do whatever the heck I wanted and figuring out what to do in place of the stag statue was exciting because I got to use the icon of the sims which is the llama and there was a specific statue that i knew would be perfect and i think it just was the perfect way to marry the games because that llama is the embodiment of the sims it's the mascot of the sims and i feel like that red stag i mean the red stag is kind of iconic for the Call of the Wild because that was on all of the press. Like the box of Call of the Wild had the red stag in the middle. So it seemed only right to use a llama statue, the icon of the Sims, to replace the icon of Call of the Wild. And I'm really glad how it turned out. And it's kind of funny. I knew I wanted a water feature, like a pond, before I even saw that there's a lake on the property of Spring Creek Manor. I just thought, like, there needs to be water here. And, I mean, not only does it take up space, but I think it really helps to bring in that English countryside manor vibe, even though Spring Creek Manor is on Hirschfelden. So I guess maybe just like a European manner vibe. And I think it just helped to tie in the outside by taking up space and um, just all that foliage and greenery that I put around it because that's hand placed. And it kind of, um, because I put like fish spawns and bug spawns and stuff, it can also kind of be seen as a little nod to the angler as well. And it's actually funny because me saying that, nodding, give, giving little nods to the angler, because um, when I started building this, I wasn't playing the angler. I didn't start playing the angler probably for a month after I started building this. And um, the inside where I put all the fish, um, I didn't know what I was going to do there. I was going to, I think I was going to put just like, random stuff on display and then I was in the debug menu and I saw the fish on plaques and I was like oh my gosh I could I could put a fish I could do fish display which could be like taxidermied animals but also would could be like the angler and so then now we also have the pond and hopefully I put like a little fishing sign so hopefully sims can fish from it i'm not sure but it's just funny how um i didn't even play the angler when i first started building this and then now i wanted to put a little nod to the angler because i do play it so often and like i said i took full advantage of not having much to go off of for the landscaping and really wanted to use that to put my signature um, 
of an overflow, an overgrown flower garden. Um, if I had a signature for my builds in The Sims, it would be too many windows and an unkept flower garden. Like those two things together, you'll be like, yeah, that's a Caitlyn build. And I just, I can't help but associate an overgrown, unkempt, yet somehow orderly flower garden with a grand manor and mansion. Like, it just gives me, it just gives me, like, Elizabethan, um, Alice in Wonderland whimsy vibes, and... I have to add it. I just feel like they're synonymous. I don't know. And um, it just made sense to me because of how eccentric this manor is that they would. I can imagine like the owner's like, oh, we need a pollinator garden. Save the bees. You know, that's what I imagine in my brain. And um, it was fun that I can also throw some like gardening skill building items in there because the most important part of any sims build is to have skill building and other activities for the sims and so the outdoor area is very much that um definitely the more sims aspect of this build and that's why there's like a random wedding arch and a random hidden hot springs and then you have like the kids items and the outdoor living space, like that is very much The Sims because at its core, The Sims 4 specifically is a young adult simulator and you want, there's a lot of busy work and activities for your Sims to do so you don't get bored. And so I wanted to throw as many of those in there. Um, even like there's a telescope in the cute little gazebo that I added um, which that was a random thing. I was like, oh, I have a flower garden on one side and I have this empty space. What should we do? Oh, let's build a gazebo overlooking the pond. That that makes sense. And it really looked nice, you know, tying in that red theme from the red door and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, that's the outside is definitely very much Caitlyn and the Sims aspect where I could just go crazy and do my thing. And it definitely took the longest. It was the longest part of this build. I mean, I st there's a playlist on the channel um, of my Sims streams and you can see just how many Sims streams I spent on that outside until it was how I wanted it because I placed all the flowers, all of the rocks, everything. Um, and I often use landscaping to kind of, I kind of want to get it out of the way. So I, I got the outside done first and it took a very long time. And I do think that it's very much Spring Creek Manor in the, on the inside, but I can see the outside being being like that as well um and the inside i think i think it's a it's a good balance of the sims it's a lot of caitlin and how i like to decorate and the color schemes and stuff and i'm not surprised it took me nine months it was like a a, a baby <laughs> it was my baby on my channel and um I only built on stream because my chat wanted to see it. So I only build on stream and I only build whenever I feel like it. I, I can't, I have to be in the mood, the creative space of in my brain to want to build. So um, it didn't happen that often. I pushed to get it finished by the end of the year. Um, and so we had a lot more building streams up until uh, January 1st. And it's kind of bittersweet, honestly, to finally see this project marrying my two favorite games. Um, 
seeing it come to its head and be finished. And now I'm working on this big video and trying to figure out how I want to put that together. Um, but it was definitely time for it to be done so I can, there are other buildings. I started another build at the beginning of the year before our, before this build popped up and I would like to finish that. And there are other things that I want to build. There are other games that I want to focus on that have building. Um, so I think it was, it was only right to get that one done. And I know people are going to, my, my Call of the Wild fans, I know you're going to want to um, have me build Sasika Safari, but that's not, that is not of interest to me right now. Um, I'd be more interested to build the Leighton Lodge, to be honest. That one is more aesthetically pleasing and makes my brain happier than Sasika. Obviously, in Call of the Wild, we... Um, call, Sasika is bigger, has more mounts and platforms, so that is the go-to for main lodges. But Spring Creek Manor, despite it being smaller mount-wise, it is my favorite because it it's my aesthetic. It's aesthetically pleasing to me. I like the vibe. And then um, going off aesthetics, the Leighton Lodge is probably second. And then Sasika, but I use Sasika the most because it has the most room. Uh, we need another lodge. <laughs> anyway, um, this is a Sims and a Call of the Wild video. It's kind of weird, not going to lie. Um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed this. It's always fun for me to share my Sims, what I do in the Sims, and um, build for, for myself and for you guys. It's always fun, and um, I, don't, I don't expect everyone to like it, and this, this video is for me, so um, if you do like it, please like the video. And subscribe to the channel if you're not already. Like I said, we play The Sims here on my streams. And I stream most nights, at least five nights a week, 11 p.m. to 2 a.m. EST. If you'd like this build, it is on the gallery, Caitlin MM08. And unfortunately, I used probably every pack available. And so if you do end up downloading this build, which it does not have any custom content, so PC and console can download it. But if you are missing the packs, you will have to bear with having missing things. Um, because I think I used more pack than I did base game, unfortunately, because I can. But you will have the shell of the build and probably the landscaping for the most part. Not the flowers, but like the pond I think you will have. But I apologize if you experience that. But it is available for download if you'd like to download it. And yeah, thanks for watching. Have a good one. Bye.